Well, hello everyone again. Welcome to these exciting Bible talks on the work that Jesus did in the Gospel of John. So, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the first miracle, Jesus turning the water into wine, remember, at the, the wedding of Cana and Galilee. And then we looked at how Jesus heals this rich nobleman, this important man's little son, which was so wonderful. And then we looked at how Jesus made a man who couldn't walk, he healed him. He allowed him to walk. Oh, now today is a very, very interesting time in the life of Jesus, particularly. Jesus feeds over 5,000 people. So, let's begin our story, shall we? The Bible says in John chapter 6, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which was in, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And there were lots of people, actually, who were there listening to what he had to say and uh, showing a keen interest. They came from miles around. Jesus now was quite a well-known person. They would speak about Jesus, about the things that he said, things that he did, the places that he went to. And then we're told in the verse, it says, and great multitudes followed him. People from all over the place wanted to follow, wanted to listen, wanted to understand what Jesus was saying. And actually, do you know, there were people who followed Jesus for different reasons. Oh yes, as we may well see today. So, all different areas they came to follow the Lord Jesus. Jesus healed lots of people. The verse says people who were diseased, he healed many of them. And that meant that more people wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. You get the impression that Jesus wanted a bit of time. Time alone with his disciples. Time to pray. But it was really, really busy. It was a special time of year for the Jews. It was a Passover. A time that they would remember how Jesus brought them up out of Egypt. And Jesus goes, we're told, to the mountain. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Remember his disciples? Twelve of them. And he sat. I'm sure they would have prayed, they would have talked about the work. And as they're sitting, listening to Jesus, people start arriving. Lots of people. More people. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people started to arrive. In fact, the Bible says there were around 5,000 men besides women and children. There were lots of people and they all went out and they wanted to listen to what Jesus had to say. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude come unto him, he saith to Philip, Look at all these people, Philip. How are we going to feed them? I have a question. Why did Jesus ask Philip 
He could have asked all the, any other disciples, but he asks Philip. Well, it seems that Jesus asked Philip because Philip was from those parts. And Jesus knew that Philip, if anybody might have an idea as to where they're going to get food from to feed all these people. You see how Jesus was thinking further ahead. He knew that they had come to listen to him, but he was thinking, well, how am I going to look after these people? There's thousands of them. How? They, they must be hungry by now, surely. If they're not hungry now, they're going to be hungry after I've spoken to them. When Jesus and lifted up his eyes and saw a great mock company come to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread that they may eat? But the next verse says something very interesting. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus already knew. Jesus already had the answer. But he wanted to see what Philip would say. Hmm. That tells us a bit about Jesus, doesn't it? Jesus might ask of us things because he wants to see how we react, how we cope, how we respond, if you like. Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not enough. Even if we had 200 pence, and if we was to buy food for these people, there wouldn't be enough. In other words, Philip is saying, Lord, we can never, ever afford to buy enough food for these people. Never. Oh, but look what happens next. One of the disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, said unto him, now, at that point, they see, well, who, who's got any, anybody got any bread? Anybody got any fish? Anybody got any food so we can give to these people? And then, this man, Andrew, says to Jesus, well, look, there's no food. We, we, we can't feed these people. Yes, you cured lots of people, but they're still hungry. How are we going to feed all these people? We can't do it. You give them food. We, 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 we can't do it. I know. Let's see what we can find. And they found a little boy. He had five barley loaves and two small fishes. Maybe his mommy or his daddy had packed him a nice lunch because he's going to be out all day listening to Jesus. That was good, wasn't it? Mommies and daddies making us a packed lunch for the day. That's all he had. But he couldn't give that to 5,000 people. Five barley loaves and two fishes. That wouldn't go very far, would it? Well, I could probably eat all that by myself. <laughs> could you? This is all we have, the disciples said. Then they looked at Jesus. They had seen that look before. He had a plan. Jesus said to the disciples, tell all the people to sit down on the grass. Another gospel says it was green grass. So they sat down on the green grass. And Jesus says, tell them to sit down in groups of 50 and groups of 100. 
So they all sat down in groups of 50, in groups of 100. And some of them thought, oh, we're going to have a picnic here. Oh, but um, we haven't got any food. So I'm not sitting on the green grass. It's a lovely day, but we've got no food and we're really hungry. Then do you know what Jesus did? He said, sit down on the green grass, groups of 50 and groups of 100. And then I want you to pray. And the verse says, and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to his disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. He blessed it and wow, it was a miracle. He gave out to the disciples the barley loaves and there were more barley loaves and more and more and more and more more than they could ever eat and he gave the fish to the disciples and they distributed the fish more and more and more and more what a miracle and the people, they were so pleased. But this is, oh, this is beautiful, fresh bread of the taste. It's a bit like the wine, do you remember? In John chapter 2. This was the best barley bread that ever tasted. The best fish oh, that ever tasted. Yeah. It was beautiful. But, but how did that happen? All that little boy had was five barley loaves and two little fishes. And Jesus was able to feed over 5,000 people. That was amazing. It gets better. Then Jesus says, we don't want to waste any of it. So all the fragments, all the pieces of bread, all the fish, anything that's left over, collect it in baskets. There were 12 baskets full. Oh, that's interesting. 12 disciples. 12 baskets full. What is the lesson? Jesus is showing the disciples and the people, but particularly the disciples, that Jesus can do much more, provide much more in abundance. And there was lots left over. Oh, it gets better. All those people, when they had finished eating, they all started to talk amongst themselves. Hey, he can heal people, make people well again. He can feed us with food like this, let and lots over. We've got a great idea. Let's make him king now. He can lead us as a king and we can get rid of all the Romans. Oh, what a good idea, they thought. We can make him king. And uh, if we've got illnesses, if we're sick, he can make us well. If we, we need food, he can give us lots of food. Jesus can do anything. He can be our king now. But that wasn't the plan that Jesus wanted. It wasn't the plan that God wanted at all. 
Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Lots left over. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king. He is our king. We want him to be king now. Jesus didn't want that. Jesus and God had a plan. The plan was that Jesus had to put the cross before the crown but the people wanted Jesus to be king then and there. So you know what Jesus does? He sends the disciples away on the boat by themselves. And he keeps away from the crowd, from the people. And Jesus and the disciples entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum and it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. Jesus had to get away because people wanted him to be king then and there. So what's the lesson for you and me? Jesus talking to the disciples. It's not time for me to be king yet. I must go to the cross first. That's my father's will. And Jesus got away from the disciples and got away from the crowd. And as it got dark and people went home, walked that way home, Jesus said to the disciples, go in the boat and I'll meet you. And Jesus stayed by himself in prayer because he knew that God wanted him to go to the cross first before he would become king. It was very difficult for Jesus because he wanted to do what God wanted him to do. And it's like that with us. In our choices, we must do what God wants us to do. So important. Jesus did it, and we must do the same. Next time, we're going to look at another amazing miracle that Jesus did. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>